our replacement casters. So getting right into this game, I'm excited to see it, actually. Uh, this is going to be a peculiar matchup. I feel like there's going to be a lot of strange interaction between the Pikmin and all of uh, Pac-Man's different projectiles. And, oh, already Sinji looking for the Galaxian combos. And just to digress for a second, Sweet Z, I saw him play last week where he beat it was a really impressive win. I think it might have been... I don't remember exactly, but he is one of the most improved players. Just going from this kind of nobody to really a notable threat here in Westchester. And I don't know if Sinji is necessarily ready for that, but also I don't know if Sweet Z is ready for Sinji falling out of that up smash. But Sweet Z is still alive at 120, and he hasn't really made any, uh, any meaningful hits in quite a while. He has two purples, though. One purple left. All right, but that purple is just what he needs in order to get back onto the stage. Oh, yeah. And so Sweet Z, I know he's, like, really leveled up in the past while, but he might not have a lot of Pac-Man experience. And specifically, he probably doesn't have Sinji's Pac-Man experience. Sinji is one of the best Pac-Man in the world. Just an absolute stellar demon of a player. And that is what, what uh, Sweet Z is experiencing right here and now. Right, Sinji with more control, more projectiles, racking up damage. And I love the fact that Sinji will all of a sudden retreat just because he's like, no, I want to take some time to get my projectile going, get my setup, my mechanisms working and whirring again. And then he goes back to engaging, which is what we're seeing right here. The, the, using those boxing tools that Pac-Man does have available to himself. Forward airs, forward tilts, and... Yeah, right now, Sweet Z knows he needs to get the kill. He knows he's taking all of this damage, but Sinji, one step ahead of him, is dodging all of these smash attacks, able to rack up even more percent, putting him at the corner. He's desperately trying to break that hydrant, and in the end, Sinji snatches that actual, the, the, uh, the finishing blow away from him because he was keeping track of the damage the hydrant had taken. Sinji up by a completely clean stock right now. And yeah, Sweet is looking to end it. He has another per pick, purple bottle, purple Pikmin. And okay, that Hydrant is going to deal some damage, knock Sinji off stage, but it's not enough to kill him just yet. Now, I believe yellow Pikmin are immune to that, uh, the bell? I'm not sure if it's actually an electric effect. I know it has that stun. Uh, it's one of those little cute, interesting things about the Pikmin is that they do have immunity. Uh, not usually not terribly relevant, but we might see something like that happen in this game. But Swigsy finally takes that first stock, and oh, can he get 55%? That was a purple up smash, and man, purple up smashes are just so so devastating, especially at higher percents and at early percents as well. And Swigsy throwing away the white Pikmin. Actually, I think he realizes that. Oftentimes, we're seeing that as soon as Sinji gets a Pikmin on him, he just neutral airs, and Pac-Man neutral air is an amazing tool that he's using half the time anyway, so no real loss to him. Oh, brilliant up air sneaking it in. We saw that Sinji was looking for a smash attack, and that's keeping uh, Swigzy alive, but he's only managed to do 86% on Sinji, and Sinji has an entire another stock in the bag. This might be the situation where if you're Sweezy, start really think about, okay, learn how this character works to see if there's some adaptations, changes that can be made before, you know, by the time next game rolls around. Because I think Sinji is looking to bring us to a game two real soon. That forward tilt, not enough to do it, but okay, looking for a back throw. Leans up the stock. Technically, I mean, they are even stocks right here, but Pac-Man uh, has kill tools available, and I would not describe Olimar as a heavy character with a lot of survivability. Any hilt, another forward tilt, or as you see it, the Hydrant setup going to be limiting so many of Swigsy's options, he's forced to get up into it. And so, for those of you who don't know, the reason why that setup is so good is that trampoline will force characters into jump. So if you neutral get up, boom, you're forced into jumping, you slam right into the hydrant. You try to do like a drop from ledge, jump back, boom, you slam into the hydrant. You try to ledge up, I think the only option that might have worked there was 
well, roll onto ledge, which Sinji was already anticipating and being ready to cover, and then maybe staying still, just hanging out on ledge, looking up and gazing at death as it tumbles right in front of you. And then maybe it doesn't actually connect, but even then, that might have just been checkmate. Moving into game two, we're going to be uh, on PS2 right now. And ooh, this is the sort of stage that we're probably going to be seeing Sinji use those platforms a bit more. He can use them to retreat in order to, uh, in order to charge his projectiles that he really likes to use, that sort of thing. But as we're seeing Sweeks, he's hanging out underneath those platforms, throwing Pikmin, gaining a little bit of stage control, and Honestly, doing quite a bit with it. 61% on Sinji. This is the first time we've seen Swigzy with a real lead, but ooh, can he maintain it? He has to pull out his Pikmin once again. Yeah, he's been consistently throwing away whites, recognizing that those are not going to be his winning conditions in this particular matchup. Ooh, Swigzy got hit by that Galaxian, but didn't take as much damage as he might have. We're seeing Pikmin body blocking uh, these little hits for him, and that time, the white connecting and took Sinji a second to get rid of it, so that was some solid damage that Sweetsy actually got. And this is the sort of thing where now Sweetsy has enough of a lead that Sinji... I mean, I'm not necessarily going to say, oh, Sinji is forced to approach. Um, no, not definitely Sinji is forced to approach. A beautiful edge guard right there, covering so many options. Even after falling out of that down air, Sinji was able to get through and punish. But now, at 18%, that, that's probably going to be growing. Sweegzy was doing a good job of, you know, playing defensively and getting a lot of damage in that way, but now he's the one who needs to make something happen. And Sinji is on the Oh, wow! Beautiful job reading that neutral air at the exact spacing he needed to be. I believe that also would have covered roll. So, just good stuff from Sweegzy managing to take out Sinji's stock before this game slipped away from him. Well, we have a grab, and a grab leads to big damage. 52% onto Sinji. They have been going back and forth. Game one looked so dominant for Sinji, but this time around, they are absolutely where you go in purple. No! They can't come back to him! Father, I cannot click the that hydrant. Save me. Um, anyway, in the meantime, Swigzy has taken a um, 117%. And trapped at the ledge once more. He has no Pikmin, which will make his recovery a little bit easier. Now that he's gotten back to the ground. Yeah, he's trying to find a way to get more damage onto Sinji. They're both playing so patiently around each other. Sinji hasn't dropped a Hydrant in quite a while. There we finally see the Hydrant only once he's on ledge. Beautiful ledge attack. That's an option we hadn't really seen from Swigzy yet. And, oh, that's another white onto Sinji. But the apple is so sneaky right there. Sinji's taking about 83%. And if you're Sweetsy, that means you're going to have to deal some, oh, some damage more before you can even think about really killing Sinji. Meanwhile, Sinji's just looking to get as much percent as he can. Beautiful retreat to ledge. He's going to avoid getting grabbed, but... Oh. Breaking through with that dash attack, that pac man dash attack. Very fast option, surprisingly lagless. And Sinji dancing around, just jumping right over Swigzy and exerting all of this pressure with forward airs. And now he has the Galaxian in hand, and Galaxian can lead some massive damage. 72% already. Oh, wow, the Pikmin does not actually contest the Hydrant as it falls on Swigzy, dealing even more damage. Bell in hand. This is the sort of thing where, oh, you see the fear. And that fear was deserved. In the end, Swigzy jumps, get clipped by the bell, and that's going to be an up smash to take the set. Sinji moving on in bracket, winning 2-0 over Swigzy. But honestly, I'm excited to see if maybe he can make some upsets, make a 